So, I'm starting off here with a provocative question, or at least I think it's a provocative question, is wildlife conservation sustainable? No? Wildlife conservation is important. Biodiversity loss is important. This chart, which is from the Intergovernmental Science Policy Platform of Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, is showing not wildlife loss per se, but biodiversity loss, which you can see has been accelerating over a period of about a century. People talk about there being a sixth mass extinction. We're certainly losing megafauna. Wildlife conservation is important. And yet I'm asking whether wildlife conservation is sustainable. Imagine living with wildlife. We live with squirrels. People get annoyed with squirrels. Imagine if you had lions in the backyard, that if you went walking at night, you had to worry about a leopard. Imagine if you had elephants that were nearby. They might be stomping on your, you know, if you were growing some plants, or they might even damage your car. It's not easy living with wildlife. There are tensions here. And I want to underline that one of the reasons that there's such a lot of biodiversity loss and wildlife loss is because there are tensions between socioeconomic development and wildlife habitat. The most important sources of wildlife loss or biodiversity loss is land use change. For agriculture, urbanization, industry, transportation networks. So we've got a tension here. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give an example of one country's experience of trying to deal with these things. Botswana. I spent a lot of time in Botswana. Botswana is in southern Africa, just north of South Africa. It's really interesting for looking at issues related to ecology, wildlife, because if you see, see if I can do the pointer. I don't know if I'm doing the pointer. I don't think so. Anyway, the, the big thing that looks like a delta, it is a delta. It's a river delta. The Okavango River is coming from Angola, emptying out into the Kalahari Desert. It's emptying out into a desert. Imagine a river emptying out into a desert. Obviously, it's going to be a magnet for wildlife. Megafauna, insects, migratory birds, lots of lush um, plants. It's recognized as a world um, heritage site. It's that important. Okay? So this is an important country for wildlife. <clears throat> what has Botswana been doing to manage its wildlife? I can tell you about some recent developments. In 19, oh, not 19, 2014, the government of the day, um, led by Ian Comer, a um, well-established, well-known, internationally known conservationist, decided to inter introduce a hunting ban. Okay. This was widely um, recognized as a positive move by um, conservationists. It's like, this is a step in the right direction. We have lots of animals that are endangered, and here we're going to have an absolute ban to protect these people. And um, one of the headline issues here is elephants in particular, because it turns out that Botswana has more elephants, more African elephants than any other country in Africa. The numbers are disputed. You get different sorts of estimates of the number of elephants in Botswana and in the continent altogether. But you oftentimes see that Botswana has roughly a third of all African elephants in one country. And if you think about that map I was just showing you, they're mostly in the northwest corner. Okay, so we have a hunting ban in a country that has a treasure trove of elephants. Wonderful. Except that that's a lot of elephants. Okay. Now let's look at the human side of things. Here we've got some images from Ngamiland, the area in the northwest around the, the, the delta. The picture with the trees there, those are trees that have been damaged by elephants. I looked for and could not find pictures of Crop damage, couldn't find them. People like taking pictures of elephants looking majestic or you know, the lions looking regal. They don't really take pictures too often of damaged crops. But this area, people really, they farm, but they don't, it's a marginal activity because of things like wildlife damage. Elephants crunching their crops, seriously. Monkeys and birds coming in and eating it. If they, they try to raise livestock, Around the edges of the Okavango Delta, people do try to raise livestock. They do raise livestock, 
But there are two problems. One is predation. Again, the lions come into the picture. But also, there are diseases that get transmitted from the wildlife to the livestock. So these options, are, they, they engage with these, but they're difficult. But you see a lot of in this area really nature-based livelihoods. So you can see there um, the images of the boat with the reeds. You can see the home where they've made fences or around, like, yeah, fences, I guess, out of the reeds. They also use it for thatching, brooms, mats, all sorts of things. You see the women who are making baskets. These baskets are both um, highly valued by tourists, but also functional. They use them around the home. They collect wild fruits. They also engage in subsistence hunting. They also engage in tourism activity. There is a program introduced in the 1990s called Community-Based Natural Resource Management in which communities could form organizations that could partner with tourist operations. Ph photographic safaris, yes, but also hunting safaris. And the hunting safaris were especially remunerative. In an area that, in Botswana, which is one of the wealthier countries in Africa, this is a particularly poor area. Okay? So hunting ban means they no longer get the revenues from hunting safaris. They still cannot do that much in terms of agriculture, whether it be crops or livestock. And they're not supposed to be engaging in subsistence hunting either. It was a disaster from their perspective in terms of their livelihoods. So hunting ban, yay, says the international conservationist. Boo, worse than boo from the, the local people. When Ian Kama stepped down, he met his um, time, a term limit and he had to step down. He was replaced by um, Okwetsi Masisi, who's still the president to this day. One of the first things that President Masisi did was to set up a committee to look at the hunting ban and to determine whether or not to keep it, and if not, what to do. They decided to lift it. This was seen by, again, the international conservationist and many others as a step in the wrong direction. You're, you're, you're having this threatened. I mean, elephants are on the IUCN red list. They are threatened with extinction. Many of the other animals that you find in the Okavango Delta are threatened with extinction. And now you're saying you're reintroducing hunting. As you can see in this quote here, President Assisi is like, you don't know what you're talking about. You're being hypocritical. Most of the criticism comes from North America, Europe. The um, things that I've had there in terms of the quotes from the media are from British outlets, right? These areas you don't really have megafauna, right? They've actually industrialized, they've urbanized. And here we have in Botswana, they actually have maintained their, their wildlife. They had a, roughly a third of the elephant population before the hunting ban was put in place. They still do to this day. And it's not because of the hunting ban that they have that, right? So. From the perspective of the local community, this was a move in the right direction. It was a, a move that recognized their vulnerability and the lack of alternatives that are available to them. My closing thought on this is, I don't know if wildlife conservation is sustainable. We have a long trend there of loss of biodiversity, loss of wildlife. I don't know if we can save it. But I do have a pretty strong suspicion that going with a coercive, prohibitive approach is not the answer. If there's any approach that's going to be sustainable in the sense of actually being able to protect the wildlife, it's got to get people involved. It's got to take people where they are, recognize that people are part of the ecosystem. We are all connected. If we don't get people involved, if we don't get people actually wanting to protect the wildlife, we're not going to do it. We're just not going to be able to. So. Do I have a solution? I don't have a solution. But I do think that we need to be aware when we're hearing these sorts of stories about other parts of the world, or if we're thinking about environmental issues other than wildlife conservation, about the people who are involved and how we can get them on board. I mean, think about how we can get them on board. It doesn't guarantee success, but I think we have a much better chance if we can get people on board. That's it, thank you.